Hi, this is Mr. Max with Sankofa Mathematics. So I have a question here, and as you can see, it's taken from the y equals mx plus c book. Um, it's on geometry. So basically, what it is is circle theorems. Um, so you have got the diagram here, and it's not drawn to scale, so do not use um, things to measure, like protractors and stuff like that. All right, you need to know your angle theories or theorems. Now, the diagram shows um, that the distance KL is parallel to the distance NM, as you can see indicated by these arrows here. That means those two sides are um, parallel. And then also, um, the angle KON, this angle is 54, as you can see, that angle marked 54. And then... Um, you are asked to find angle KLM, that is this angle that you are supposed to find. Now, um, it's there are certain things that you need to be on the lookout for, and not always are you going to um, have those things, you know, uh, obvious to you. So, one of the things that um, perhaps you should do, perhaps you should draw yourselves from K, to N, like so, a chord. We call that a chord. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because this angle of 54, right, versus this, this angle is being subtended by this chord or RKN. And also, if you also look at these other angles that it also subtends. So not only is it subtending that particular angle, all right, it will also subtain another particular angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another line, and I'm going to have that line from M. So let me bring in that line for you. Just want to get my, my line. Okay, so this is the line. So I'm going to bring that line from N, M all the way up to K. So what happens now, is that this angle that is here will be half of 54, which is 29, okay? Not 29, but rather 27, 27. So angle at the center theorem stated angle at the center, like this 54, is twice the angle at the circumference subtended by the same arc. And in this case, the arc is Kn. Right. Why is that information important, you may ask? Now, we can also see that triangle LMN, this particular angle here, should be 90 degrees. And the reason for that is that you have, you have angle in a semicircle. Right. So what am I left with? I have this whole angle here now. And that angle there is nothing but 90 degrees plus 27 degrees. All right. So I took the same diagram and I just drew it here because it's kind of, you know, uh, all out there if you do that. So when you add 90 degrees, you're going to get 117 if you add that. That means that the angle that I'm now talking about is this angle and it is 100 and 17 degrees. So, in order for me to find this missing one here now, so I now see that these angles, they are co-interior. And what can you tell me about co-interior angles? Well, they add up to 180 degrees. So, what does it mean? It means then that angle KLM, okay, plus 117 degrees should equal to 180, okay? So angle KLM will therefore be 180 degrees, take away 117. Therefore, our angle that we are requiring here, okay, angle KLM would be 63 degrees.
So you gotta work in the diagram, bring it, bring up some chords and semi semi angles in a semicircle when you can find those things, and then you solve. There's another one here. So this figure, and and I just drew the same diagram, copy and paste the same diagram. So what we have, it says that um, AB is parallel to DC and angle AO. AOD is 58 degrees. You are supposed to find the angles mark X, Y, and Z. So I'm not going to work in alphabetical order for this one. So what I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with angle Z here. And the reason why I'm starting off with angle Z is um, because of one key fact. All right. When you look at angle Z, and I'm very particularly interested in this 58 degrees here. This 58 degrees is being created by this arc here. And this 58 degrees is at the center. Can you see that? Right, so angle at the center. So once you go angle at the center, should also equal, the, should be half, it's twice as long as the angle at the circumference. So which means, that this particular angle here is going to be half the angle here because it's being subtended by the same chord. That chord creates the angle here. All right. That same chord sort of creates, that same chord creates an angle there. Can you see that? So chord AD is the one that is subtending. So that particular case then, it's interesting. And so what we know is that that angle must be 29 degrees. Okay, so I will write in what I have so far because angle Z is 29 degrees. Now, I am going to also do something else. Now, you know that um, angles between parallel lines, so if you have parallel lines here, okay, these lines are parallel, and you draw a transversal, okay, which is a, like a line that cuts through the parallel lines, no matter where it is, this particular angle is creating different interesting effects. This angle will equal to that angle. It's kind of like a Z. So we call these alternate angles. So not only is this 29 going to alternate with that particular angle, this 29 will also be here, 29. Can you see that? because it's between parallel lines, as you can see by the arrows. Now, that information is very important for me, all right? And I'm also going to look at this particular angle here. And this particular angle here should be 90 degrees, okay? Because it's an angle in a semicircle. That is triangle ACB. Now, why is triangle ACB so important? So if I was to draw triangle ACB, maybe, so you can see why triangle ACB is important, it will be that you will see the values, okay? So this is just a rough sketch. So we said that is 90 degrees over there. We said then this is 29 degrees here. So we can actually find our Y from the angle sum of a triangle. So our Y, you can simply say 180 degrees minus, okay, 29 plus Y plus 90. All right, so there's another 90 there that we have to, to consider, so plus 90 degrees. All right, let me just write it in nicely, the angle sum of a triangle. So it's 90 degrees plus 29 plus y, which is what we are requiring. We need to find the value of y. So these three angles here, and this one here, and that one here, should add up to 180 degrees. I hope everybody uh, gets the idea now how you find angle Y. So in any case, then, you should therefore find that angle Y would be 61 degrees. Okay, so I have my angle Z and I have my angle Y, what they are requiring me to find. Now there's one more. And the angle that is left is angle X. Right, so with angle X, I'm going to do something interesting. So let me just bring in a different color. So we know that this little angle here is 29, okay, right? Um, it's quite useful. And if I was to draw a line, 
like so. If I was to draw a line from here to there, I'm going to have another triangle where this is a triangle in a semicircle, so that uh, will be 90 degrees out there. Can you see that? Now, why is this information important? And how would it help me to find my missing value? Right, I'm going to come back here to this little angle here. So I'm going to write that in blue. So I want to know what is this little angle equal to. The whole thing is Y, but this little angle here, what is it equal to? So now look at the chord AD. Can you see this chord? Now it creates this angle 58 at the center. It also creates this angle here at the circumference. So that angle is also half of 58, which is 29. So, in effect now, I have another triangle, which is a right angle triangle, okay, so I'm going to sketch it quickly here, right, where I have 90 degrees here, and I have another 29 degrees here also, and then I have a very interesting line, and that line goes like this, all right, that's line AC, well, I'm not going to complete that, that is angle X there, and this also happens to be 29. Now, why is that information important? Because if you look at this whole angle, all right, and now you have three angles, you can also use the angle sum of a triangle. So I can go ahead and I can say, I'm going to write these angles like this. This whole one here is angle X plus 29. Let's say that's one angle. Plus 90 degrees, that's another angle up there. Okay. Plus this angle here of 29, well, they should also add up to 180 degrees. Now, remember, you can do this in different ways, okay? So, at the end of the day, I will have, if I remove the brackets, I will have X plus 148 degrees is equal to 180. That should leave me with X, which is 180, take away 148 degrees. So, at the end of the day, angle X would be equal to 32 degrees. So my various solution for Z and Y, because you need to answer that, would be, if I do that here at the bottom, uh, angle X equals to 32 degrees, angle Y, X, Y, Z, angle Y equals to, if we go back to go check, angle Y is 61 degrees, and angle Z, is equal to 29 degrees. We did this very much in the beginning. So angle Z is 29 degrees. So you gotta work in your diagram, okay? So, Masvitaishe, I hope this question, um, you understand it now a little bit better, okay? And also all of you who are struggling with these theorems.